Good Wednesday afternoon, everybody. Uh, it is, what are we at? About four o'clock Eastern. I'm just getting myself put together here. We've got a bit of a cliffhanger to wrap up today. Okay, Mr. and Stitches, you can take us to the craft table. Oh, I am loving how this is working out. We have got one more row of the current current color <laughs> to do. Not sure if I'm going to be able to make it all the way around for one more row of the border with this. That's sort of the cliffhanger we left off on on Monday. Uh, but I'm going to see how far I can get with it. I am really hoping that I have just enough because I was scouring the craft room looking for something that I might be able to finish the row with that is similar-ish. And I did find something. I'm trying to stick to this. I have this sort of collection of yarn that I really want to use up and get out of my uh, get out of my stash because I've had them uh, for for many many a year at this point, and it's not a very perfect match, but it'll have to do. So I'm really hoping I can get most of the way, if not all the way, around with this. But we shall see. And then I've got two more rows to do in white because. The order that we were doing the border was two rows orange, two rows green, two rows current, two rows white, and then I should be finished my extra large mitered granny square blanket. So welcome everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to get right into it today. So I've got my scissors just off to the side, got my yarn needle. I'm still using my six size six millimeter J hook and I clipped, here's my little my little end where I can get started from again. I clipped it with a stitch marker so that I wouldn't lose my space. I knew I was going to be coming back to it relatively quickly, so I just used a clip as opposed to a um, safety pin. But uh, there we are. And then I'm all ready to start row two. I feel like there was something I wanted to mention to you guys before I got going, and it seems to have escaped my... Ah! He posted a photograph. So uh, someone asked on Monday if we could post a photograph of the blanket thus far. We did post a photograph, uh, too, in fact, over on the community tab. And yesterday, we also posted a photo from Shell. Shell is also making one of the extra large mitered granny square blankets. Um, and she was very sweet to allow us to share her photo with everybody. And she actually spun her squares the opposite direction. So we're all mine have the, uh, the little orange focal point square pointing into the center. Hers are all spun around so that they're pointing out to, to the outward corners. It's a completely different effect, and it looks so cool. So um, if you haven't seen that, that's over on the community tab from yesterday. Okay, let, let's get going. I'm going to make sure that my yarn is free and clear and nothing's sitting on it. And I have to... Got like a little bit of a tail here. What's going on? Is this... I think I have to re-weave in my little tail. Yeah, I see what I did. Tried to weave my tail in. I've got a bit of a loop. That is a strange little phenomenon. Hmm. You know what? Maybe I'll just try and hide that. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to actually stick my hook in that loop. I'm not sure where it's from, but it doesn't want to undo. So I'm going to just <laughs> work it into the stitch. I'm going to slip stitch across and into the chain two space, because that's where I like to start. I'm gonna chain three, counts as a double crochet, two more double crochets to get that shell finished. Chain two, three double crochet, that's my first corner done, and I am away to the races, holy cow, let's see how far we can get. All right, so the we left off with a bit of a poll last, Monday and the poll was <laughs> do you think I can make it all the way around with the current color for another row yes no and it was a 50 50 split so 50 percent of you thought I might be able to do it the other 50 were <laughs> thinking no definitely going to be playing some yarn chicken with this color we'll see how far I can go I hope that Wednesday is treating you all very nicely Monday and Tuesday kind of flew by I can't believe most of today is gone as well already um, I want to get this done today. This is the last day to work on this blanket. I want to get it onto the couch and enjoy it for the rest of the cool weather. It's um, 
probably going to be cool right up until the May long weekend, the May 2-4 weekend, as we call it, the 2-4 weekend in uh, May, which is about three, three and a half weeks from now. Um, so that's the, you know, the weather really starts to get nice in, in Canada around the last week of May. Uh, so we still can have some cool days leading up to that, which is nice to have a little blanket somewhere nearby that you can drape over your legs while you're sitting doing a little crochet or watching a little Netflix or something. And that is the plan. Once again, I've got to find my groove here. So far, so good. I have to take stock of this leftover ball of yarn once I get across to the first corner. Oh, I really hope I can, I really hope I can get all the way around. I just don't know. <laughs> oh, looks like we've got some birthdays going on here. We've got a birthday with Fortamika. Happy birthday. This is a lovely time of year to be born. The world feels like it's waking back up again after a long snooze. Oops. Getting ahead of myself here. Come here, you. There we go. Now, once again, in case anybody's kind of just tuning in or hasn't seen the entire project so far, uh, we did put together a playlist. That was something else that was requested on Monday. So we have a playlist of the entire project because this was basically built live. Um, we have not got a recap video of the zigzag stitch join yet. That is coming. I figured I would mix it in with um, a little show and tell so we can show you the whole blanket properly because um, when we're sitting here at the craft table, this is just too confined an area to really show off an entire blanket. So we're going to put together a little, little show and tell. It'll include a recap of the zigzag stitch, and that'll be the final uh, entrance in this playlist for this extra large fighter granny square blanket. We will make sure that playlist is uh, pegged somewhere down below once the video is finished streaming today. Um, Oh, from Connie. did we? Thank you, Connie. Connie has gifted a membership. Who won? Who won? I didn't get a chance to see. Sorry, I'm still getting into the groove here. I have only got half a brain. The winner of Connie's membership gift was Sandy B. Sandy B has won it. I see Uncle Steve has just gifted one to Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. And welcome to the new members. All right, I'm at the corner. I have, oh yeah, uh, this is definitely not gonna make it all the way around. I have just completed the first edge. So I've got, that's one short side. I've got two long sides and another short side left to do. Oh golly. Now it's good, now I'm getting down to the whole, okay, so like, can I make it down another side? <laughs> another gift. Nico, thank you, Nico, for Pamela. And Pamela has won it. Oh, thank you guys so much. <laughs> yes, and I just saw Christine. Christina mentioned the Fair Isle blanket. That is next Friday already for May. That'll be our fifth official installment in our Fair Isle style calendar blanket. It's hard to believe that the that went by very fast, yes. We've got, uh, so far, we've got four official uh, stripes or strips or months, I guess, down on that blanket. We've got our January, February, March, and April. And we've also got additional uh, Fair Isle style uh, graphs and patterns. Um, some of them are available in our Etsy shop. And we've also got a free one over on um, our website on the Pattern Workshop page. It's an awareness ribbon graph. Um, so if anybody was hoping to kind of elongate their blanket or add a little bit of extra 
uh, personality in here and there. We've got all sorts of fun options and lots more to come. Oh, oh my gosh, new member. Welcome, Donna, and a membership milestone from Rony. Hi to the Stitches family from the UK. Hello. Oh, it must be later in the day over there. Much, much later. Later in the evening, I guess. Uh, four hours, five hours, Roni, are you, how, how much further ahead are you guys right now? I, I like I said last on my, Monday, I, I get all confused with the, uh, the time change. We've got, we're on daylight saving time now, I think. I think it's day, it's day, daylight saving. It's, it's, it's right, it, right, honey? It doesn't make sense. It's like daylight saving time when we have the most daylight and then standard time when we don't have any daylight. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, everybody. Whoa, it's 11.15 in Turkey. That is late. Becky! I am living, I'm living. I'm guessing you mean loving your calendar blanket. That's great. You're starting another one for your sister? Wonderful. I'm living my calendar blanket too, frankly. <laughs> oh. I, I am so excited about the May edition. I know, I know, I say this every darn month, but every single month that comes along, I get giddier and giddier. And uh, this, this, is, this is no exception. Connie says about five hours ahead. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome on a Wednesday afternoon. If you're just popping in, thank you so much. Ozzy Sandy, welcome to Alpaca. Thank you. Ooh, 2215 in South Africa. That is late. Yes, you might may or may not see the end of the stream, Gary. <laughs> Hopefully, though, we won't be going super, super long today because I am just hoping to get this uh final row of current color around the blanket and then two rows of white and we'll do a little finishing decision when we get to that point I think but uh, I'm feeling pretty limber I feel like the the stitches are zipping along did I just miss another one let me just see here Susan welcome to Alpaca Mr. and Stitches has got an eye on the chat. He is down the well. He's been plied with snacks. He had himself a couple sandwiches before he went down there. So nobody feel bad for him. He's perfectly happy down there. Feel bad for me. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to just make it to the bottom of this row or this side, I should say. Yep. Ah, oh, shucks. Shucks. I was so hoping I would get all the way around again. Janet says, if that color runs out, what are you going to add? Well, I took the liberty of sniffing around the stash just before the live stream, and I found a ball of yarn. It's in my please use this up pile. It is not a perfect match. I'm actually staring at one that might be a better match, but but I'm kind of hoping to use it up. So that's why I'm going to go. Oh, Becky, thank you for the super sticker. Oh, a coffee. Ah, I would love one of those. I'm always in the mood for a coffee. Welcome, welcome, Susan. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm just getting right to the very bottom of this side. I am going to run out. Shucks. Okay, you know what? We are going to have a little pull. I've just hit the end of my 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 rope. <laughs> I've, I've reached the end of my rope, everybody. <laughs> I've got one more short side and one more full side to do, and I am literally two shells away from finishing off that side. I've got just a smidgen lift. So I have two options, two options to tie in. Hi, Diane. Love your channel. Love you and Mr. Stitches. Thank you, Diane. Um, so let's vote. This is what I've got. So this is the Please Use It Up Now ball of yarn that I grabbed. It is um out of my stash i'm pretty sure it's acrylic 
Not a giant fan of it, um, but it is similar-ish in color. It's more of a wine than a currant, and it's similar in size. And I, this is a scrap blanket, so I'm not, a, I'm not against using it up. So there's that, but you can see how it's not really the same color. But um, I still think it's okay with the other colors in the blanket. Like it's a similar hue. And I have one more ball. Let's see if I can get it out of the trash without knocking down my wall of yarn here. Super sticker. A super sticker. Hang on, I'm coming back. Okay. A super sticker from Uncle Steve. Thank you, Uncle Steve. Oh, and it's a rainbow. Gee, last time it was a unicorn, which I love, and now it's a rainbow. I feel like I have a little match set now. <laughs> All right, and this is the other one. So I'd say this one is almost identical in color. Wow. So this is an acrylic, It's a, yeah, it practically looks like the same yarn. It's a size four, so it's a little thicker. Can you hold it a little closer to the camera? Yes. So here are, the yarn I'm finishing is up top, and the yarn that I'm I'm possibly considering as the, the extension is on the, is just below it. So you can see how very similar those are versus this guy, which is one I'd like to use up and is in a similar weight category to the one I'm finishing with. So there we go. The one in the middle is the one that's finishing. This is, a I hope you guys can see that. I'll change, change the way I'm holding it a little bit. I'm trying to try and get the, get the colors. So here we go for the poll. Hmm. I'm going to say the, we're going to, this one of uh, the, the, so this, I fin, I'm finishing current. My options are wine or plum. Let's call this plum and coral are my two options. So plum or coral to pick up where the current is leaving off. And um, the pros for the plum is that it's roughly the same weight category. And it's in my use this up, please now stash. And the pros for the coral is that it's very similar in color, but it's a thicker weight yarn. So that might change the way that border looks a little bit. Um, All right, but uh, so let's have that poll up. We'll give everybody about, oh, I don't know, about, about 60 seconds to vote. And then we'll decide. 60 seconds. I am on a mission to finish this lovely blanket today. I'll have a sip of my water and I'll pop into the chat here. We have a membership renewal. Welcome again, Cinnamon. Thank you so much for renewing. Jennifer, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> All right. I'm also going to look to, oh, wow. Everybody's going coral, 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 coral. <laughs> you should be able to see, I don't know if you can see the poll. I can't see the poll, but I will be able to see the, uh, I'll be able to, see, uh, how many? 112. 112. Okay, you can finish the poll. That's great. Oh, they're good. They're coming in thick and fast. This is wonderful. I love polls. Polls are the best. All this right, is 10 more, we'll 10 more seconds. Okay. It's a community built blanket. So I'm going to use what you guys tell me to. Mr. And Stitches is counting down the seconds. Two, one. one. Okay, and he's closing off the poll. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. I get to see the results in the chat when they pop up. Oh, here we go. 95% coral. Overwhelmingly, we're going with the coral. All right. So this little guy goes back in the use it up stash. I'm going to tie in this coral. And this is going to be a much less jarring switch over. Hello, Wendy. Thank you for the super chat. From, uh, from Britain. From the UK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Tying in my coral and off I go. I'm going to speed through the rest of this. So I got half, almost exactly halfway around with the rest of that, that current color. So I'm not too brokenhearted about that. I got a chance to use it up. 
I think this coral, I'm gonna have to adjust my tension a little bit here because it's a little thicker. Let me get a couple of stitches in and then I'll show you guys how close it is. So there's the corner done. All right, can everybody see that if I hold it up nice and close to the camera? So there's the last shell in the current and here's the first shell in the coral, from current to coral. Not bad, eh? That's pretty close. It's very close. Very close. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. It's almost identical. <laughs> very, very close. Yeah, and in this lighting, it does look almost identical. So that is a nice way to finish off that little space. I will fly through the rest of this row, and then we'll be on to the white. Nice choice, chat. Very good choice. But you know what? This community is awesome. You can always leave it to the community to make the right choice. This is the community built extra large mitered granny square blanket. <laughs> and I'm going to think of you guys every single time I use it. All right. That is pretty darn close. Almost can't see it. Oh, another super chat. Katie, thank you. That looks good. Thank you so much. I think it's pretty it's pretty close. Like it's um it's 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 it's, it's a very subtle change in color, which is great because I really liked how the current mixed with the green and the orange and of course the white and the gray. So I'm very pleased about that. Barbara says she can't even see a difference in the color. Well, that's that's pretty great. Like it's, I mean, the, the top row of shells is the coral and the bottom row of shells is the current. So yeah, it is pretty darn close. This, the current is 100% wool and the coral is 100% acrylic. So because I'm mixing fibers, I have to remember that when I wash this blanket, I've got to treat the whole thing like it's it's wool and be very careful with it. Otherwise, the wool might shrink on me and then I'll have a, a completely distorted um, blanket shape. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> Everyone is remarking on how how close the colors are. Yeah, this is a really great. Uh, again, I'll take some photographs um, in uh, different lighting. Yeah. We'll take some close-up photographs with different lighting um, after the, the stream, and we'll post it on the community tab so you guys can see just how close these two are. Um, I'll even include um, a photograph of the other yarn I was considering, just so uh, you can all kind of nod your heads in, in general approval at, <laughs> at our, our collective choice here. The photos will show up on the community tab. Um, so we'll be, yeah, we'll post a link. Mr. and Stitches will post a link to the community tab. And what just happened here? Hope. Thank you, Hope. Hope is just gifted an Stitches membership to Linda. Linda has won it. Welcome, Linda. This has been so much fun. I'm making my way across the bottom of the blanket now. So this is the other short side, the other short edge. And then I've got the second long side to do, and then I'll be done with this color. So that's that's a good feeling. Hi, Al. This yarn is unraveling from the middle of that big ball. So I have to yank on it every so often, but luckily it's not tangling on me. Wouldn't that just be the thing? When I started this blanket, I had I had two or three totally tangling balls of yarn and I spent an entire afternoon untangling them and rewinding them. And I thought there, all of the yarn for this blanket project are neatly wound into pretty little cakes. 
And don't I go and finish one now? And I've got a whole new ball of yarn here. I'm just hoping that it doesn't knot up on me. <laughs> what stitch are you This is the granny shell stitch. Pretty much this entire blanket uses the granny shell stitch. Um, the centerpiece is the extra large mitered granny square. So we've got that really cool 90 degree angle effect happening. And I added some elongation to it. So the, to the top and the bottom, I added some straight granny shell stitch. So the shell stitch just worked back and forth, back and forth. And now I'm putting on the border, which is just more granny shell stitch. The entire concept we realized behind this blanket is the kiss method. Keep it simple, sweetheart, or in this case, keep it shell stitch. All right. We've got another corner. I've got the last long side to go. And then that's it for this row. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Cheryl just said, Jada, don't jinx yourself. What 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 did I say that I may have jinxed myself with? Oh, with the tangling yarn? Yes, I certainly hope not. <laughs> we have a blanket for you a poll for the next community project, but we already have. One. Yes, yes, Gina, we already have a new project for the next community, the next community project, which will be starting next week. Uh, exact date and time, we're not sure yet, but it will be next week. We're going to be doing a big, beautiful basket crochet along. And uh, I, I need more baskets, especially big ones. All four of the big, beautiful baskets I currently have are busy in use in my closet. And I need more. I need a couple in the craft room. Um, I could use a couple more in the living room, you know, just to hold extra things like uh, extra blankets, works in progress, maybe some pretty balls of yarn. I just use them all the time. So um, I need another one. And it was a great suggestion. So that's what we're going to be doing. Whips and wits. Yeah, that takes me back. Cinnamon, thank you for gifting five memberships. Oh, my gosh. Who's one here? Alma, Wendy, blatantly oh, Billy, Melissa, and Catherine. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Jennifer, and welcome everybody. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Five That's awesome. Thank you so much, Cinnamon. Yes, another big beautiful basket is on the schedule for next week. Um, I just I can't get enough of them. And of course, it's another fantastic way to use up scraps. I had plans originally of making it using um, some specifically sort of really thick yarn. But the more I look at this pile of yarn behind me that's in my please use this, use this up now stash, I think I'm going to just put it all together. We are going to make some wild magic balls. I'm going to treat it like the uh, the scrap gan, what, like the, the big scrap gan tutorial we did, golly, how many years ago? Like seven or eight? It's the, it's, um, it, the, the scrap gan tutorial we did was all half double crochet, half double crochet. And it was where you, you take all of your scraps, you put them all into a, a group of light yarns and a group of dark yarns. And then you just kind of keep pairing a light and a dark together. It doesn't matter what colors they are. And it turns out beautifully. Um, but I would like to do that kind of for the, the big, beautiful basket. Um, so we're going to see, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with yarn, uh, scraps next week when we get into the big, beautiful basket. Got a question from Diane. Sure. How do you know what you use with which yarn? That's an interesting question, Shan. So, so how do you know what tension to use with what yarn? Um, well, there's a couple ways. So it depends on the project you're doing. Um, because if you if you want a tighter tension, so for example, for our big beautiful basket, we want tight tension because we want nice stiff fabric so that the basket stands up on its own. Sometimes you want really loose tension because you want something to be pretty and lacy and drapey and even and open. So it depends on the project, but then you would approach your yarn in two different ways. One, um, Pick the yarn you think is best for the project. Do a couple samples to get the look you're going for. So whether you want tight tension or whether you want, or whether you want loose tension. Or you take a look at the sleeve, the label of the yarn you purchased. There'll be a gauge there. And that gauge has a recommended 
um, hook size in order to achieve the specific gauge on the label. And the whole point of that is just so if you're planning out a project and you are aware of it being of a certain gauge, that will help you figure out if that yarn would suit the gauge you're looking for. Or if you're trying to test your own gauge using that yarn, um, it gives you an idea of, of how close to the official gauge using that specific hook you would be. Um, so those are a couple ways you can figure out gauge depending on the project or if you just want to test your own gauge out or if you're concerned, you know, if you've gotten a ball of yarn and you're not sure if you've got the right hook or if you think maybe your tension tends to be a little loose or a little tight. Those are a couple ways to check. If you want tighter tension in general, you go down a hook size. So that makes for smaller, tighter stitches. And if you want looser or larger tension in general, you go up a hook size and that helps make larger, looser stitches. Oh, I'm almost near the end of this row. Do, do, do. Can you do the border on any Diane, can you make this, can you do this border on any granny square blanket? Absolutely. Absolutely. The only thing that might change is depending on how you seamed your squares together. So if it's a really tight seam and there's no space between the squares. So I have a really loose seam, a lacy seam. So there's space between my squares. But if you did like the ladder stitch or the whip stitch or single crochet or slip stitch and your seams like are really, really tight. The only thing that changes is when you're working that initial border row where you put your shells when you come to the intersection of a couple squares. So for example, here, because I have this nice big loose open space uh, between my sh my squares, it made sense to put a shell first in the corner space of square number one, hop the seam and then put the shell in the next corner space of square number two. But if this was a really tight seam and the seams of the, the edges of the squares were right butted up against each other, it would probably make more sense to skip the corner space on square number one, put the shell in the actual edge of the seam, and then skip the corner space on, sh on square number two and keep going. Um, so that's the only thing that changes. Um, you're basically going for an even edge, foundation row, an even foundation row, um, nothing that looks too puckered or nothing that looks too loose. Um, and that's really the only thing that changes. And then you're away to the races. It's basically like adding a big granny square row um, over and over and over again. The corners are the same and um, the uh, the shell stitch is the same. And that is the end of that row. So I'm going to join with a slip stitch and I'm going to fasten off. Nico, thank you so much for sharing or gifting another membership. And Becky has won it. Congratulations, Becky. All right, that is my two rows of current. It actually became current and coral, which is kind of a pretty sounding thing. Current and coral. Doesn't that sound like a really funky boutique that you'd run into somewhere? Current and coral. Like they sell, you know, really pretty things for your home and like kind of modernized looking hippie clothes. You know what I mean? Current and coral. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to weave this tail through a couple of stitches and up into the corner so that I can work over top of it because I'm kind of enjoying weaving in my tails as I go. There we go. The screen going black and white was me. Uh, Mr. Stitches says the screen going black and white for a moment was him. He's been fiddling around at the controls there. I don't know what he's up to, but that was him, not the squirrels. <laughs> Although that was very big of him. He could have blamed it on squirrels and he didn't. Oh, he's just fiddling with the exposure. He's trying to decide if maybe it's a little too bright. It's a beautiful sunny, sunny afternoon here. So uh, that might be why he's fiddling with it. I'm just going to weave in. Want people to think they're going crazy. Yeah, he doesn't want anybody to think they're going crazy. You're not. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> We're this is this is live. This is live uh live well TV for I guess for a lack of a better word. So just about anything can happen. All right. I am down to my last two rows of the border. Holy smokes, and that is this lovely cake of white. This is antique white. 
Um, this is the Pound of Love by Lion Brand. I've been really loving this yarn lately. And um, I have definitely got enough to do two rows. We'll see how far I get. If I get the two rows done and I feel like it needs something, a little something else, then I might, I might see what I think. Holy cow. Now, of course, I can't find the middle. There we go. <laughs> and that's why General G is in the well. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I get put in the well. No, Donna, I didn't see your question. We're uh, we're both sort of fiddling around here. I'm gonna just quickly just repeat it for me, and and I'll I'll keep an eye on the chat. I'm gonna join my yarn with a double crochet in the corner, and then two more. How do you join bulky yarns together so they look nice? Oh, the question is how do you join bulky yarns together so it looks nice? Um, that is a really good question. So. It depends. If you're using bulky yarn, chances are the project you're using is already kind of bulky. So um, it might, you could do the type of yarn tie that I just did, which is where you hold your two ends together and tie a simple knot so that the two ends sort of stick out one way and then the two working tails are out the other. Um, tie it nice and tightly. It should make for a fairly tiny little knot. And then you can just work over top of the short tails. If that isn't going to work for you, then you might be able to get away with a weaver's knot. Uh, a weaver's knot is what a lot of people call the invisible knot or, um, uh, I don't know, it's got a bunch of different different um, titles. I find it's the one where you, um, you can, there's a, a couple, you can sort of like Tie the yarn ends, tie, so you bring your two yarns together, you tie a knot over here around this tail, and then you tie a knot over here around this tail, and then you pull them together. And it, it's like, it creates a knot that doesn't apparently want to go anywhere, and you can work over top of those tails, and that makes maybe like a flatter knot. And then there's another, uh, there's another type where you, you pull the yarn literally through you break through the middle of the yarn that you're attaching it to and you kind of weave the tail of the yarn literally into the body of the yarn that you're um you're attaching it to so you kind of weave the two pieces together that that works the best if you're using wool i find because wool uh, fibers have little little hooks that kind of grab onto each other. And if you kind of weave those two pieces of yarn into each other, they'll tend to want to stay together. But I don't find that that one works very well for acrylic or slippery yarns. Um, so there are several different options for, for knotting together your yarn. It does depend on the project you're working on, like whether or not those little edges or tails can be hidden easily. Um, and it also depends on the fiber content, because that will also give you some different options too. Caroline calls it a surgeon's knot. People are suggesting the surgeon knot also works well. I don't, I don't know if, if that's also another name for one of the knots I just, uh, I just described. But um, yeah, there are so many names for the same thing because we are a global community now. We've all kind of learned things with a different title. <laughs> ah, and we are nice and away here on this second last row of shell stitch in the border on this blanket. Um, it's going to be a pretty decent size. I think when I measured it on when on Monday night, I measured it and I mentioned that size information in the community post. Um, I think it was something like 36 by 48. And that is not blocked. So this blanket hasn't been washed. It hasn't been blocked. It hasn't been used, um, which, of course, will will ease up the stitches and make it even bigger. But right away, that is, we're not even done. And like 36 or 30, 36 by 48 or 38 by 49, it was something something like that. And I thought, good Lord, that's a really good size already. And I'm not even done. I did not intend to make this a large blanket. It's just evolving into that. We need 
Carly says I'm like a machine. I'm really fast. Yeah, <laughs> I have been crocheting a long time, Carly. So I would hope that I can be speedy, especially with this particular um, stitch pattern. So the double crochet I find is the fastest stitch for me. I can do that stitch faster than any of the other stitches. And the granny shell stitch, because it's just groups of three double crochets all lumped together into a space. So I don't even have to actually try to find a stitch. I'm just feeling along for the next hole. This is a fast pattern to work. And that's another reason I love it so much. Uh, Mr. and Stitches is looking for a fun topic to turn into a poll. And I'm just thinking favorite yarn poll. We need it, but the best way to do these, yarn. best way to do these polls is kind of a yes or no scenario, or maybe yeah. like four uh, at max, like four four different possible answers. So let me see here. Let's make a yarn pole. Um, I would like to know. Oh, maybe, maybe. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do multiple choice. So when you go yarn shopping, so you're out, out in the store, you're looking for a little, you're looking for a little woolly retail therapy. So when you go yarn shopping, do you do you make yarn purchase decisions A on price, B on uh, the project you're working on, um, C on uh, fiber fiber content, or D just like I don't have that. It's something new, and I'm gonna try it. So novelty, I guess. Price, project, uh, fiber, or novelty? Price, project, fiber, or novelty? So what is the, what's the main reason that you find yourself buying yarn? I would love to know. All right. Welcome everybody who's just getting here. Mary Stitches says, what yarn would be similar to Lori Holt's yarn? I'm having a difficult time finding the yarn similar. I am not familiar with that. So if anybody in the chat is, uh, knows it well enough to say what a good substitution would be, then please feel free to share. Hole is up and running. Mr. and Stitches has set the poll. And uh, please feel free to pop in. I have to say that I typically don't buy yarn with a project in mind. I'm one of those people that just goes to the store, goes into the yarn aisle, tries to keep my brain from exploding, um, falls in love with pretty much everything I see. <laughs> and I will, if if I see something's on sale, it's a buy. It's a buy. I, I definitely am motivated by price point because I am cheap, cheap, cheap. So I like to buy my yarn when it's on sale. Um, I, for a while, I don't know if Amazon still does it, but for a while, Amazon would do these fun things called, um, add-on deals and they often had yarn as an add-on deal. So like you could get, so it was sort of like they had a bunch of, of bulk yarn lying around and sometimes it was really good, good names. Like it was Burnout or Red Heart or Lion Brand. And, uh, you could get like a few balls of, of, of some bulk yarn that they didn't need anymore for very little, like a couple bucks or something. And that was sort of like in it insofar as you were already making a purchase, it was like, oh, here, since you're already spending some money, here's an add-on purchase. So I loved those. I haven't seen those in a while, though. Hope buys for all those reasons. I I have bought uh, because something is new and pretty. That's my second biggest reason for buying yarn. So it, if it's not on sale, but I just have to lot, walk out of the store with it, then it's probably because it was pretty, it's new, um, it's a beautiful color. I find I tend to replace colors in my stash before I go buying yarn for a specific project. So once in a while, I'll buy yarn for a specific project, but it's probably the last reason that I, <laughs> I bought yarn. Yeah, 
And Shan is making a comment. She says crochet or knitting pole. So I'm going to assume you mean like what's your favorite, what's your favorite crochet versus knitting? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that probably most of the people watching are crochet first, then knitting, if knitting at all. But that would be a good poll. We'll 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 do that one next. We can only do four. Well, see, for me, um, for me, the option of novelty is just sort of like that covers a, a broad range of things. Like it's a new type of yarn. It's really, really pretty. The color is is pretty. I don't need it, but it's just such a pretty color. I have to have it. So I mean, novelty, not in the sense of it being weird looking yarn, but novelty in the sense of it being new to me, uh, a brand new product. Um, you know, a new color, a new, a new something I want to explore, I want to try. So that's what I mean by novelty, a true sense of the true sense of the word novelty. Uh, there was a good question earlier, but oh, uh, Carly, Carly asked, do we have a hexagon cardigan tutorial? Carly asked if we have a hexagon cardigan tutorial yeah, like putting hexagon. oh like the yeah 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 um not for adults no uh but we've got a mini one for a mini a mini hexagon sweater ornament tutorial and the concept is the same so if you were going to make yourself um, a hexagon uh sweater then you could use that little uh, video as a guide and it will you basically just need to make a couple of hexagons that when you drape them over your um, arm will, you know, meet in the back, meet in the front. Um, the idea is to make them larger than you necessarily need because a hexagon sweater cardigan is usually kind of a nice big sloppy thing. Um, but we do not have a specific tutorial for like an adult uh, for that. But I've considered it. Um, it's just that I have so many little hexagons right now that I want to use up <laughs> into things. I've been sort of Focusing on them at the, yeah, we just did a bag using the little hexagons. Um, and I've, I've kind of been thinking about doing a, a poncho of sorts with the other hexagons, but I'm still fiddling around with that. I kind of come back to that. It's one of those, oh yes, that pile of, of granny hexagons there in the corner. Hmm, let me come back to that and do a little project uh, brainstorming. How many votes we have? 128. We have 128 votes in the poll. Okay, I think you could probably call it, Mr. Yeah, and Stitches. Uh, yep, you can finish that poll. Okay, last chance, everybody. Here it comes. Great, I got my eye here. 47% project, 41% price, 6% fiber, 4% novelty. That is very interesting to me. So most of you are, what you're saying is that most of you are responsible yarn buyers and you only go out for <laughs> and buy yarn for specific projects. Uh, so I'm, 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 uh, I'm not, uh, I, but, but, but price is a 41%. So that's pretty close. So this next, the next one is, is price. Okay. So that doesn't make me feel too bad. That means at least I'm in the, the second biggest category. <laughs> All right, I'd like to do a, a, a crochet versus knitting poll. Right. So I think what the question should be is, um, do you knit or crochet, uh, knit, crochet, C, both? So A to knit, B to crochet, C to both. I would love to, to see that result. Hi, Lydia. Better late than never, ne better late than never, yeah. <laughs> I'm working away on the first, oh, I love this. I just love it edged in white. Oh, that looks so nice. It's like wild fun and then the calm after the storm, you know? Off it goes. Mr. Institches has launched the new pool. The votes are flying in. I love it. Ah, polls are so much fun. 
I really love to knit, but I don't do it very often because I'm usually busy working on a, a crochet project for, either for myself or for all of you. Um, so I haven't picked up my knitting needles in quite a while, but uh, they are staring at me. I always have them pretty, they're always close. They're always close by, kind of beckoning me. Everyone's loving the blanket and the color combination. Thank you very much, everybody. I love these colors too. I, I uh, am working through a stash of yarn that I call my Please Use This Up Now stash. It consists of balls of color that I don't particularly like or don't, don't necessarily match anything else. It's uh, balls of yarn where I've lost the label or got hopelessly tangled and need to be detangled. Um, some of the balls of yarn are just like leftovers from projects and I just don't know really what else to do with them. So it's it's a real odds and sods kind of pile of yarn. And a lot of the balls in that pile have been in my collection for upwards of 30 years. That's three zero. So it is high time they got shown a little love and got turned into something. So I'm steadily working away at that pile. Barbara says this blank reminds her of a salad. I like that. Salad is a good thing. Salad with fruit in it. Salad with fruit in it, yeah. <laughs> I love to crochet because it is fast, 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 fast. Um, and because I'm so familiar with it, I can get an idea out of my head with it faster than I can knitting. But when I feel like really kind of dialing in and becoming super focused on a project, I will knit because I feel like knitting requires my absolute attention, which sometimes I don't really mind. Sometimes I just want to be completely engaged in a project and not really thinking about much else. So I guess knitting's kind of a nice escape for me in that regard. Turning another corner here. Let's get this blanket moved around. Oh, this is the final side for my first row of antique white. That sun is just pouring in here into the craft room. Oh. No, one, uh, no one says it's, it looks bad. Everyone says it looks fine. It's not too bright. Uh, it's, it's, you know what? It's kind of nice to look at something sunny. As long as I keep the blanket down and nobody should be getting blinded, <laughs> yeah, that's right. least of all me. Marianne, we're working on a new setup so Mr. and Stitches can once again join me in the craft room and the two of us can bicker like we normally do. <laughs> yes, we will get back to whips and wits. We will get back to the granny skater game. We have a lot of plans. We're just... Um, currently working out a few a few technical things like we've got to fix some of our technical equipment we've got to rearrange some furniture we have to, uh, buy some new stuff. yeah we need to buy a couple new things uh everything kind of got old all at once which of course isn't that the way so we're we're kind of <laughs> made we've made a list of priorities and we have to kind of work through it one little thing at a time so uh um, we're in the middle of that uh, Oh, big thank you to Nico. Nico, thank you so much for gifting another membership. And Anka, am I pronouncing that right? Anka Rubinetto has won it. Congratulations. Ask Nico how the hobbits are doing. Oh, Mr. and Stitches wants to know how the hobbits are doing, Nico. Are they still offended that we shoved them out of the way? <laughs> Are they still offended that we shoved them out of the way? <laughs> Crochet takes priority. Becky, thank you. The color looks gray today instead of blue. You know what? It must be the extra sunlight. Isn't that interesting? It is definitely gray. I haven't been trying to deceive any of you. <laughs> it's 
definitely a gray. Um, and I guess today the color, the sunlight is uh, is showing its true colors. Ha ha. Yeah, it's looking more gray today. Hi, Becky. Welcome, everybody. I know sometimes a lot of us like to sort of sit and watch a live stream and not necessarily uh, chit chat in the, in the text or the the, uh, the live chat. I'm that way too. Shout out to everyone watching quietly and sneakily. Yes, a big shout out to everybody lurking, uh, <laughs> lurking on the the live. <laughs> Just a perfect day for a little bit of crochet in our wonderful creative community. I'm going to end the poll. Get ready. Mr. and Stitches is about to end the poll. So if you haven't yet had a chance to vote, get your vote in. Here comes. And here comes the poll. Do you knit, crochet, or both? I crochet 68%. I do both 29%. I knit. One percent. <laughs> that is really cool to know. Look at Summer's lurking uh, emojis. I, I didn't see Summer's lurking emojis. I, the, uh, oh, lurking. lurking. <laughs> we're seeing a lurking here. We, we want all you lurkers to put a little hello in the chat. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Stitches would like the lurkers to just sort of put in a quick hello. I'm the same way, my darling friends. I usually sit and watch a live stream while my hands are busy. So I don't usually have the chance to to, to chit chat. Sometimes I do, but, but uh, most of the time I just like to sit and watch. And uh, I love to watch the chat. I love to see everybody, you know, chit chatting and um you know interacting with each other i think that is so much fun i just i i really like the concept of a live stream i think these are this is like a wonderful sort of i don't know if invention is the right word but development in the technical world i think it's great hello 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 everybody thank you so much for weighing in and saying hi it's all of our lurkers <laughs> <laughs> lurker baking oatmeal cookies well that is a perfectly good reason to be lurking <laughs> i'll take a couple of those welcome 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 lurking and doing the poll excellent <laughs> I'm almost finished this row. One more row to go. <laughs> I love lurking. I know we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got an idea for a poll, Mr. and Stitches. And I think I'm it ready. I think it might be the most dis divisive poll we've ever done oh no is it star trek related it is not it is cookie related cookie okay oatmeal cookies with or without the raisins you want to start a i'm going to start a war <laughs> <laughs> okay i am working on my last row i think i've just bumped a couple of things here there we go Shane, three, two more double crochets, gets that shell started. I definitely have enough to finish this row. What a relief, because I like the last couple of rows of a blanket to be devoid of splicing. I kind of like it to be the final say, the final border. Uh, <laughs> I hate raisins. I live in a divided household. <laughs> Marianne says chocolate Here chips and walnuts. We're gonna break the yeah, here comes here comes the poll. Now I have to say, 
I do like other things in my oatmeal cookies, but I want to know specifically, is it, is it, you know, just an oatmeal cookie or would you have it with raisins? Because I feel like, I feel like it's the pineapple on pizza question all over again, you know? <laughs> Keep it peaceful, everyone. Mr. Stitch is weighing in from the well. I like chocolate chip cookies in my oatmeal, or I like chocolate chips in my oatmeal cookies some of the time. Uh, typically, I like something with just a little bit more, I guess I like raisins because they have a little bit of a tarty sweetness to them. Um, and I also just like plain oatmeal cookies. So I'm on the fence for this one. I'm not actually sure how I would answer it. <laughs> Becky says, lurking and eating oatmeal cookies without raisins. <laughs> Becky's lurking and eating oatmeal cookies. Oh, I love it. Without the raisins. Yes, not everybody likes raisins. Mr. In Stitches is not a fan of raisins in anything. I don't mind them. Yes. Like, I won't throw them at the wall. <laughs> he won't violently throw them out the door or anything, but... <laughs> But uh, you prefer them not to be there. <laughs> Charlie says, you started this day to make a decision. Okay. Um, I'm going to say I like my oatmeal cookies. If it's just, if the choice is oatmeal or oatmeal and raisin, I'm going to go with oatmeal and raisin. Because I just like that little extra something in my cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so far we have 110 votes. 110 votes. All right. Let's give it another minute or so. Mm -hmm. Jay Lee weighing in that chocolate chip cookies are the best cookies ever. I do love a good chocolate chip cookie. I like to I like to put weird things in my cookies. Like I like to open up the uh, open up the kitchen cupboard and go. All right, what have we got? You know dried fruit, leftover, you know, candy, leftover you know, Easter egg stuff. Uh, you know, like I'll just smash up everything and put them in the cookie dough. <laughs> hey, we always end up talking about food here. I think that's because uh, being creative goes hand in hand with, with, uh, creating food. So I'm always kind of thinking of the next thing I'm going to make. It's either something I'm crocheting or something I'm cooking, typically. Barbara says, chewy or crunchy? Monster cookies. Oh, Lydia, are they called? I, I know um I know cookies to be called hermit cookies, and they they often have, like, everything in them. They will have, like, dried fruit and uh, chocolate chips, chocolate chunks, um, you know, just kind of a, whatever you've got in the in the kitchen cabinet. And I like my cookies chewy, typically. I don't really like crispy cookies. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end the poll. Mr. In Stitches is going to end the poll. We'll see what everybody thinks. Here it comes. There is it is. With raisins, 62%. Without, no, 37%. No kidding. Okay, that is cool. I am surprised to see that. I kind of half expected it to be a little more 50-50-ish, but there you go. Wow. We, I'm that too. Catherine, you must be British. C crispy cookies or biscuits, she says. Um, I understand a biscuit, a, a British biscuit to be like uh, an oatmeal, like a, an oat cake or a digestive cookie, uh, nothing that's sweet or or chewy or that has anything kind of like, you know, um, like a frosting or anything super fancy to do with it. Uh, that, that I understand to be a biscuit. And then a cookie is something a little more like doughy, I guess. I have a new, I have a new poll coming out. Oh, Mr. Stitch has got another poll going out. This is fun. We could all sit, we could all sit, <laughs> sit here voting and, and chit-chatting for, for hours. <laughs> 
I know. I need to go bake some cookies now, too, Regina. I think I'm going to do that. The raisins have survived. Mr. and Stitches has got a new poll up. I'm going to have a sip of my water here. Yes, Melissa, a biscuit is a, is, is a fluffy kind of cakey, like little miniature bun almost um, in the West. Like I, I consider a biscuit like a tea biscuit. Same thing. It's kind of like a, a little mini scone. It's, it's a fluffy uh um not not uh yeast but like a heavy baking powder related i don't even know what to call it i'm like i'm searching for the word i want to say like a bun but it's not a yeast bread it's a it's a baking soda bread that's how i know a biscuit but that's because i guess i'm in the west Charlie's got to go check out, check it to see if they've got any, right, have the right ingredients in the cupboard there. It's a cookie making night. I'm going to make cookies. I know I've got, I've got some leftover mini eggs. Mr. Stitches is happy. I've got leftover mini eggs, uh, those little candy covered chocolate mini eggs. Um, I like to put those on top of my cookies. Those bake nicely. I like to, in fact, I made, I made basic sugar cookies, like chewy sugar cookies a couple weeks ago. For Easter, and I I stuck um, a, a pretzel, so a nice salty pretzel on top of each of them, and then inside the pretzel, the pretzel arms, I put a bunch, I nested a bunch of these little chocolate eggs, and those were very good. I like those. So the cookie kind of played the back, the background, uh, you know, tune to the to the the pretzel and the sweet sweet chocolate eggs, but ooh, that was good, very very good. I liked that. <laughs> oh i'm zipping along i've got let's see i'm on the first long side of my last row of white border here the shell stitch what is in a cowboy cookie lucy somebody tell me what's in a cowboy cookie Is this why biscuits and gravy sound horrible? Yes, you're talking about something completely different. So a British biscuit is like a cookie. It's a sweet, crispy little cookie, something you have with your tea in the afternoon, or maybe an oat cake you might have with your tea in the morning. And a biscuit in the West is a is a baking powder concoction of flour, baking powder, a lot of butter. You get that nice flaky, super puffed up thing. It's it's not very sweet at all. It's more of a savory. It's kind of like a, a palate cleanser um, of a of a of dough bomb. Some of them call them dough bombs, and they go nicely with gravy. They're almost like a really big, fluffy, uh, not cooked in the in the. They're they're. Not... I wanted. I just a bit drew a drew a. Yeah, they taste a little bit like a pastry, but they're they're not quite pastry because they're fluffy like a bun, but they're not a yeast yeasty bread. Um, I like they're like a scone. They're like a scone, but not as heavy. So I I like a biscuit. Um, I've never had biscuits and gravy, uh, so nobody freak out out there. But um, biscuits and gravy isn't something I've ever had. But uh, I like those. I like tea biscuits. So I like that same biscuit, but sliced in half with with jam and butter. Um, that I would, I have those right out of the oven with a cup of tea and that is just heaven for me. Biscuits and sausage gravy for breakfast. That sounds really good. Baked in the oven, fluffy and light. Will you be baking cookies today? No, 83%. Yes, 16%. Well, I have to say I'm part of that. It's too hot to bake, says April. It's in the 80s. Oh my. Yeah, it's definitely not that hot here. Oh, baklava. I love that. Yeah, that's good stuff. 
Okay, Charlie, are you surprised that I haven't had it because I'm Canadian? Because I would say that biscuits and gravy isn't a Canadian thing necessarily. I would say that poutine is very Canadian. Fries and gravy, I've had that, oh, I don't know, 3,000 times with with uh, cheese curds and whatnot. But um, that's one of my favorites. I know that sounds so typically Canadian, but it's true. <laughs> And I love cheese biscuits. Oh, yeah. Yes, Barbara. Cheese biscuits. Oh, yeah. Yummy. Homestead meal, old farmer's food. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've i never had the biscuits with the gravy. I've had biscuits with other things before. Um, I think usually I make, when I, when I would have made biscuits, I even have like an old, it's funny you should say that, I have an old ranch recipe that I use that is one of my grandmothers, my, oh, pardon me, my great great grandmothers literally from pioneering on the prairies um and it's uh they call them dough bombs or or, or belly busters belly busters because they're so full of um uh baking powder uh or baking soda i guess was what they were using back then um but they're i typically have them with like a chili or a stew like a, a heavy heavy uh, heavy heavy soup Oh, Catherine says, how about how about a poll for the Brits? I got to read this. Okay. Scones, jam, then cream or cream, then jam. Okay, that's fun. And also, this is so, so scones, jam, then cream or cream, then jam. And now somebody must explain to me, is it literally like the type of cream you would put in your coffee? Or is it like a, a clotted cream? Or what are we talking about here? And so it's scones, jam, and cream. Or cream and jam. Yeah. <laughs> and what about honey? Is scones S C O N E S? S C O N E S, yeah, scones. scones. Yeah. Is this a Brits only? Apple? This is this is kind of a Brits only thing, yeah. Like a dumpling in the UK. So a a, a dumpling is actually cooked. Okay, and I'm about to split everybody again. To me, a dumpling is cooked in the stew. So it's like a it's like a, a bit it's like a biscuit style dough that you plop into the stew while the stew is boiling and you cook it in the stew and that it cooks in the stew and it's kind of like uh it's and then it you sort of spoon it into your your bowl with the rest of your soup. It's not like uh, a Yorkshire pudding, which is actually typically baked almost like in a with it's baked in some gravy, but in a muffin tin or possibly a proper Yorkshire gravy or Yorkshire pudding uh, tin, but the Brits will know that's probably more of a... <laughs> All this talk of buttered biscuits and sausage is just making my, my head swing. I love it. <laughs> garlic and cheese to the biscuits. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, I like to add garlic to just about anything. <laughs> All right, working across the bottom. This is coming together so nicely. All right, let me not blind everybody. Got all this sunlight coming in here. Let me keep the blanket down. Perfect. I'm getting so hungry. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Trina says, Aunt Bessie does does pre-made stew dumplings. So are these dumplings that are not cooked in the stew, but served with the stew? Question mark. I am so baking this afternoon. I cannot, I'm just, I'm, my, my, I'm sitting here with my mind racing. Like, what am I going to make? I made pizza from scratch yesterday because we had a little bit of leftover um, spaghetti sauce that I wanted to use up. That lasted about five minutes. Yeah, that did not last long. That, that disappeared pretty quickly. All right, I'm going to end the poll. All right, Mr. Insitches is ending the poll. Here we go, 30 votes. 
30 votes. So that's about how many Brits we've got. Or at least scone eaters. Are there any lurking Brits in the chat? <laughs> Yeah, we got we have one lurking Brit. One lurking Brit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm adding two lurking Brits. Two two lurking Brits. <laughs> here it comes. All right, here comes the pool. All finished. Jam then cream, eighty one percent. Cream then jam, eighteen percent. Well, that's an interesting reversal. Eighty one to eighteen. Jam then cream. Okay, that's got to be because otherwise you don't want the cream slink, sinking into the biscuit. You just want it kind of puddling on top of the, the jam. Or is it more of an aesthetic thing? The jam just looks so pretty with a bit of cream on top. Now I want biscuits. Oh my gosh. I'm a Brit and a scone eater and I'm not wearing <laughs> Oh, I just love this conversation about cream, can I just say? Look at the, the fine palettes we have out there. I think I've had clotted cream all but once in my life. When I turned 16, I had a Mad Hatter's tea party, and uh, we had to have uh, clotted cream because I was trying to trying to recreate everything they had at the Mad Tea Party from Alice in Wonderland. And I think that's the only time in my life I've had clotted cream. It's easier to spread the jam first instead of squishing it over top of the cream. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured, Catherine. Oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. oh. And Hope is right. I'm on the last row of the border for the blanket. I'm just keeping an eye on my white yarn. I have definitely enough to finish with. I've got uh, just working along the bottom. So I've got one more long side and then I'm going to wrap it, up. wrap it up. We'll be all done. This is just worked out. I had three rows left to do today and I didn't, wasn't sure if I was going to do a little extra with the white. I do have one last question though, to ask everybody once I finish up this row and uh, we'll see where that takes us. I'm really enjoying this project. I love making things kind of with everybody. It's it's a lot of fun. I love where this kind of wound up going. It just started out as a, you know, making an extra large mitered granny square because we'd had some requests to sort of just upsize the standard mitered granny square. And then from there, it just turned into this entire blanket. And I, I love it. I had no idea this was gonna happen. Oh, Nico, thank you for gifting another membership. And Amy has won it. Congratulations. Is that the same white yarn we used for the polka dot baby sweater? Yes, this is the same yarn I used for the polka dot baby sweater and the polka dot baby blanket. This is uh, antique white pound of love by lion brand there is just so much yarn in a pound of love literally a pound of it Mah -ha -ha. um i love it i it's like one of my new favorite acrylics and um my gosh it's just a never-ending ball of yarn i love it so i was able to get a really nice finish to this blanket with it <clears throat> which i'm really pleased about i am on the final stretch da -da -da -da! Oh, don't you dare. I am not getting a knot. Who was it that just said that I shouldn't jinx myself? I am not getting a knot right before the end of this blanket. <laughs> Regina, that's a great question for the poll. Mr. and Stitches, what is your favorite weight of yarn? Um, do, yep, we're going to break it up into, into sort of uh, four different groups because there's actually seven or eight weight categories. Um, so I think. The question will be, what is your favorite weight category? And I'm going to break it up into four. So I'm going to say 
The thread weights and the fingering weights are one category. Mr. and Stitches is busy typing. So the first one will be the thread and fingering weights. Thread and finger. Yep. The next category will be the medium weights. So like your lightweight, your size three, four, and five. Medium, three, four, five. Then your bulky and super bulky, which is six and seven. Okay. And the last category is novelty. novelty. So you're just your weird pom poms and your eyelash yarn and your, you know, the stuff that's just really crazy and out there, but kind of fun. Here, comes. Here comes the poll. I have to say, I use medium size for the most because it is typically the yarn that has been the most readily available for me in my crocheting and knitting career. But it's not necessarily my favorite weight category. Um, I really love super bulky because I think that is a lot of fun. And I also sometimes find it easier to work with. It doesn't sort of stress out my hands as much. Um, and I also, of course, love the opposite side of the spectrum. I love crochet thread. I love thread projects. I love working tiny when my, my hands will let me do it um, because I just love how delicate and pretty and, and lace-like that can can be. So um, I uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of, if I had to pick a category though, my favorite weight category, I'm going to have to say the middle category because it's just by by sheer, sheer you know, uh, amount of yarn in my in my stash that is in the medium weight range that's you know obviously my favorite it's the stuff i buy the most what Which one is DK? dk is a size three lightweight so what we would call a size three lightweight is yeah so if dk is your favorite it's a medium lightweight size three yarn dk stands for double knitting or double knit it doesn't stand for Donkey Kong. It does not stand for Donkey Kong, Mr. and Stitches. No. Nope. Sure? Mm -hmm. Donkey Kong yarn. Oh, I'm just a few shells from the end. Oh. That feeling when you're almost okay, done a blanket. Another cliffhanger. Another cliffhanger. Three stitches to go. Well, the, the definite cliffhanger on Monday was that I honestly didn't know if I was going to be able to finish a second row or not. I really, I really couldn't call it. And it turns out I was not able to do it. Luckily, we found a yarn that uh, pretty much blends <laughs> in. Donkey Kong yarn. I would love. I have to say, if all of a sudden, if all of a sudden Nintendo came out with a line of yarn, I would buy all of it. <laughs> Hope, thank you so much for the super sticker. Aww. <laughs> thank you, Hope. That is a very happy little fox. I also love how a great big crumpled up blanket looks like it looks like this. It looks like sort of like a an organized bit of chaos. The sun's filtering in on it. I don't know. This just this just is just such a nice little afternoon. <laughs> little slice of heaven here. <laughs> Hope, uh, 
Yes, I am so calling my DK Donkey Kong yarn. So now. <laughs> we're we're going to be referencing DK as Donkey Kong yarn now, and everybody's going to be confused. Mr. Stitches so just wants to call it Donkey Kong yarn. It's I am joining the row. That is it. Last row of the blanket complete. Woohoo! Still have some of this yarn left over. This is the never ending ball of pound of love. Absolutely love it. And I've used that white a lot. I still have a ton of the pink left. I'm going to weave in my tails. Like we're sitting in your lap. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> all 230 of you are all snuggled up on Jada's lap. <laughs> Aww. You're all of you are, are sitting are sitting <laughs> sitting in my lap. <laughs> Everybody get comfortable while I tell you a yarny story. Once upon a time, there was a donkey cock. <laughs> Ah, uh, that last little stitch. Okay, barring anything that I have to go looking for, like little uh, tails that need to be fully woven in, that is the blanket. I promise I will be doing a proper sort of show and tell video, a short one coming up soon, that'll also include a recap of the zigzag stitch. But here's what I wanted to ask you all. So let me just grab a sip of water here. Okay, as many of you know, I couldn't use the gray, actually, I guess it's this gray, I couldn't use the gray um, as a an edging row color because I'd pretty much run out when I did the four squares, but I do have just a little bit left over. I have this. I have this little rat's nest. It does, it does look like the proper color now. Yeah, it does look like the proper color now. Yeah. Look, look at the sunshine all pouring in here like this. Um, so I've got just this little bit left. I think I'll I'll do a quick little approximate measurement. I think I might have about three or four yards of it here. Maybe that's one. Maybe that's two. Maybe that's three. I have three yards. I have three yards of this yarn. So I might be able to make a little granny heart, like the, the the granny heart we have in the middle of our heart in the middle of granny square. I might be able to do um, just the first four rows of a granny square. I want to kind of stick to the shell stitch thing. And I think I want to use up this scrap of gray and I want to create something that's going to sit right in the very center here of my blanket. So Mr. and Stitches, have we got poll room to do another poll? I'm going to end this one. Okay, he's going to end the poll and then we're going to decide what it is I'm going to try and make as a little applique, just like a little tiny gray focal point to put in the center of my blanket, just so I can use up this gray. Favorite yarn weight, medium, 93%, whopping, wow. Thread and finger weight, 4%, bulky and super bulky, 1%, and no one's favorite yarn is novelty. I absolutely agree. They forgot to put donkey Kong yarn. <laughs> Donkey Kong yarn is obviously everybody's favorite. Okay, the new poll, Mr. and Stitches. Um, the am I going to with the gray yarn? Am I going to make um, a miniature granny square, a heart? I'm trying to think of what else might have a shell in it. Um, I kind of like the heart idea too. So, so, what are the so a mini granny square, a heart, maybe a star. Yeah, a star. Those three. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna. A mini granny square, a heart, or a star. Now, there's a few different ways I can make the star. There's a few different ways I can make the heart. 
and the mini granny would just be basically the first four rows of a granny square. Keeping in mind, I only have three yards of this yarn left, so very little, but I think I've got enough to make any one of those things. So let's put the poll up. You can all vote, and then I will do my best to make it, and I will stitch it down into the very center of my little blanket here, and it'll be the PS de resistance, the finishing touch, the cherry on the Sunday to finish off this blanket. Jessica Rabbit says, put it in the BBB. I have a lot of other yarn for the BBB, Jessica. Um, I've got, I will probably take a photograph of everything in that. Please use up this yarn stash because it is a, an unholy mess. <laughs> I think it's worth sharing. <laughs> Amanda says, leave it as is. I kind of would like to use up the little bit of gray, um, kind of like a little signature, you know, I suppose I could probably, I could put my signature on it. Ah. That's too much work. I don't want to. I don't want to try and stitch my name into the double crochet. So, so one of the either the mini granny, the oh I like that applied as a diamond. That's a nice idea, Patsy. The mini the mini granny, the little heart or a little star, and either way it's going to wind up in the center of my blanket here. Oh, a four leaf flower. That doesn't matter which way you look at it. That's also a good idea, Trina. A four leaf flower. Hmm. Of course, that could. I could augment the mini granny to do that. That's not such a bad idea. See, you guys are so great. I absolutely love this. Barbara's got to go. She's got to walk the doggies. Well, I think that's a good reason to go. <laughs> Enjoy the walk. Make four tiny hearts and see on each orange square. Oh, yeah. I don't know that I have enough to do that, Regina, but that would have been pretty, too. I like that, that sort of... Um, the, the even distribution of the gray. I think I have enough to make one thing, which is why I figured I would put it right in the center. Something that says mitered with the gray. Oh. Now, how would I do a right angle with just one color? But you see, then how would I position it in the middle? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, there's a poll. Make sure you vote and uh, whatever wins, we will work with that. Shell, did you say granny? Sorry, I must have missed that first one. Yeah, a little mitered granny. The only problem is, is how would I do that with just the one color? Plus, I don't think I have enough. I don't think I have enough to do the main square and then the right angle. I don't think I have enough. All right, we have over 100 votes. I'm going to end the poll. We've got over 100 votes, so let's end the poll. Thank you, Wendy. Have a great night. Mr. Incisions is end of the poll. The heart wins with 42%, then the star, then the mini granny. Okay. It is going to be the heart. All right, so here we go. I have two different versions of the heart. I kind of want to stick to the shell stitch. So I'm going to use a shell stitch heart. So here we go. Let's hope I have enough yarn to do this with. I'm going to start with the cinch circle method. Chain three. Work my first shell into it. So I'm going to try and use up as little yarn as I can at the beginning. Chain two, three more double crochet all into that little cinch circle. Chain two, I'm gonna close the circle up a little bit so I've got a little more control. Three more double crochet. Ooh, I'm also gonna need yarn left over to sew it down. That is something I gotta remember. Okay, yarn chicken, here we go. Chain two, three more double crochet. I've probably used up about a yard so far. Chain two and cinch it shut. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Okay, so there's the mini granny. I can definitely turn it into a heart. I'm going to see if I can remember how to do this. I'm gonna slip stitch into the middle stitch. 
And immediately I want to work eight double crochets into that chain two space. So here we go. Eight double crochets. Can I do it? Do I have enough? Actually, I can always stitch it down with something else, I suppose. What have I got here? Count, Jada, count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woo, I'm running out of yarn. I might have to augment this. Is six going to work? You know what? I'm going to go with six. Chain one, single crochet. Chain one, single crochet. I'm augmenting this slightly. Slip stitch. It's not going to work and I don't have enough. Okay. Um, let's make it a little lacy. So instead of all double crochets, I'm going to go double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So what was that? Five double crochets, six, double crochet, one, two, three, four, five. Five double crochets with chain ones in between. So it's going to be a little lacier. So that allows me to, what am I doing? I want to get to, What am I doing? Have I done something wrong? I've done something wrong. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. It's been a while since I made one of these. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna chain two, finish with a slip stitch in the top. I feel like I should be going right into the double crochet thing. So if I'm finished there, this is where I want my... Is everybody still there? I feel like I just saw a little bit of a buffering. <clears throat> I'm still seeing the chat moving along. Chat's still moving along. Good. I'm. I'm. You know what? I need to look at one of my, one of my squares. Where are my squares? My hearts are right over there. <clears throat> one second, guys. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. I don't know why I'm having such a brain fart here. Okay. <laughs> There was some mild buffering going on. Was there? Yeah. The internet's slowing down, maybe. So I'm going to work. I want my hearts to be. Nico says, I'm hearing the Jeopardy theme. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> I'm for some reason I'm like my my brain just kind of flatlined on on the, the heart part. And I, I think it's because I'm I'm freaking out over not having enough yarn. So what do I need to do? I need to put, do I want them all here? I think I do. Don't I want to do that? Ah, let's try it. No, nope, but that makes that the middle. That is not what I want. Hmm. Says half circle on two sides. Yeah, I know. I want to get the half circle on the two sides. I just can't decide if I'm putting the half circle into the holes or if i'm putting it into the tops of the shells i guess it's the holes i want so all right double crochet chain one double crochet chain one double crochet chain one double crochet chain one double crochet so that is one side okay I'm going to slip stitch in here into the bottom. I'm going to work a single crochet, a chain one, and a single crochet. That should probably be a single crochet. Yeah, I'm doing another cliffhanger. Okay, actually, I'm going to single crochet there. I'm going to single crochet here, chain one, single crochet, chain, so single crochet in there, and then double crochet, chain one double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. Oh, I see the end of the tail coming. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I am still messing this up. This is hilarious. Okay, I know what I'm doing. Mm 
I need a Jada Stitches tutorial. <laughs> 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 I want to work the, I want the, uh, oh, that's right. Okay. I do want to put them right here. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do something else. I'm sticking with the heart. I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to spin around and go backwards, slip stitch in here. And then I'm going to double crochet into here. Yes, chain one. Double crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain one. Double crochet. There we go. That's what I want. So double crochet, chain one. One, two, three, four, five. I did. Okay. So then a single crochet here into chain one. Double crochet into the bottom. Chain one, double crochet. I'm going to single crochet there. And then I want to double crochet in here. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Did I do it again? Lori says, you're just trying to make the rest of us feel better about trying to figure it out on our own. <laughs> this is all part of the plan. This is all part of the plan. Um, I am, I am absolutely bonkers out of my mind here. I can't remember this. This is hilarious. I, got, I might have to go pull out my actual pattern. <laughs> All right. I, I also know that I don't have enough and it's driving me mad. Okay, I'm starting this all over again. Boom, boom, boom. Don't worry about the chat. I'll take care of the chat. You've got the chat under control, do you? It's so funny. I've done so many of these over and over and over again. And then and then I decide. So instead, I think I'm going to I'm going to make this even smaller. So instead of two chains in between, I'm going to just use one chain for a corner. I'm really trying to con I'm trying to conserve my my yarn here. Summer suggests using a, a smaller hook. That's not a bad idea. Summer using a smaller hook. I think I can do it. I think I can do it with the the hook I'm using. I just need to, so I'm going to use one chain in between shells instead of two. Okay, don't let this, uh, don't let this confuse you, but Nico skipped another membership. Nico, thank you for gifting another membership. And Sandra has won. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, I have finished my little square. I want to make two halves rounded, so I kind of want that to be my bottom. I feel like I should be working all of them into this. That makes sense. And then I flatten it there. Okay. So I'm going to chain one. I'm going to double crochet into the middle of this. Oops, chain one. Stick with your plan, Jada. Chain one, double crochet. Chain one, double crochet. Okay. I need to get you some coffee stat. I need uh I need brain food. Okay, we go one, two, three, four, chain one, double crochet. Okay, I think I've got this figured out now. Chain one, and then I go into the corner. Oh, I want a single crochet into the corner. So chain one, single crochet into the corner. I'm gonna crochet tightly, chain one. That's my yes, this is starting to look a little more normal. That is my, I'm going to slip stitch here, chain one into the bottom corner, I'm or into the bottom angle. I'm going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet. That's the bottom. I chain one. I'm going to slip stitch in there. I chain one, single crochet into here. Ah, we figured it out. Chain one and Woo! double crochet. Do I have enough? One, double crochet, chain one double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, oh my gosh, chain one, and then join with a slip stitch. Oh, I did it, I did it, I did it, okay, with just a little bit to spare, and instead of making the edges, instead of making it solid through here like I would normally do with all double crochets to conserve yarn, I put a chain one in between, so I've got like a nice little 
almost like a lacy effect going, maintained the shell stitch, had about six inches of yarn left, got my heart, and I'm going to stitch it into the very center of my blanket because this was a community made blanket. So the heart is just the perfect little berry on top. I love it. I'm going to just weave this tail in along the back and I'm going to get a slightly different thinner yarn to yeah, <laughs> Mr. Stitches is trolling me. I'm going to just weave in this tail around the back. I'll just do that for now. If I have any additional, I might just trim it and put it in my, my little yarn stash. Okay, I don't think I need to put in much more than that. I'll trim that, that'll go into the yarn stuffing bowl. And now I need a little bit of gray to stitch this into the very center of my blanket. Let me just grab some yarn, I'll be right back. I think I've got some skinny gray over here. Yes, I do, perfect. Okay. Lovely. I'm going to cut myself a nice length of yarn here. Oh, the sun is streaming in. I've got my favorite community here. I'm just finishing off a blanket. I mean, I didn't know Wednesdays could be this nice. I really didn't. I'm going to anchor my yarn down here on the very bottom point of my heart on the back. I'm just going to knot it. I know this yarn looks exactly the same, but believe it or not, it's different. That is how much yarn I have. I know, isn't it crazy? Yeah. I'm gonna just weave in that other little tail. Mm. Just pull it up under a couple of things with my hook. There we go. And I'm going to stitch it in place using the top loop method so that I'm not stitching through the blanket. I'm going to make sure that my blanket corner, my squares are all nicely aligned. And then I'm going to just hold it in place while I stitch. So here we go. Pull back every so often, make sure that I'm not missing anything and I'm going to try and do every single stitch along the edge not going to pull tightly Just grabbing the top facing loops of some of the yarn. Doesn't matter whether it's from a square or the zigzag join. And I'm trying to grab loops that sit kind of directly underneath where the heart is going to lay. That looks like a good one. It looks like I'm still pretty even. I think you guys actually have a better view of this than I do. Yeah, it looks good. It looks really good on the screen. Just have to make sure we don't get my little shaky, shaky camera. Is it shaking? Mm -hmm. Well, it's me, I guess. It's wiggling up against the Mr. and Stitches. It's You're doing great. Out of the well. I can't completely see what I'm doing, but. I offered everyone oatmeal cookies with raisins but you, half the group is turning them down you you offered everybody oatmeal yeah, cookies with to raisins celebrate your achievement and how did you think you were going to get everybody some oatmeal cookies i guess i'll have to send them via ups or 
on the bottom, right in the middle. So it's still looking pretty even to you guys. I'm just, uh, yeah, it looks pretty even. Now I'm going to go around the other side. A little heart in the center. Oh, I love it. Might have to switch hands now. Is that something you guys can do? Can you kind of switch hands halfway through? Like, can you um, sew with the other? Like, I've just switched to my, my left hand for this. I don't find this very difficult to switch to switch handedness if I'm sewing because I feel like it's a much simpler action. Diane wants you to know that she stayed up for you. Aww. So many people are staying up late to see the uh, the finale. Thanks for staying up everybody. <laughs> I'm <laughs> It's the uh, it's the strangest cliffhanger ever. I'm very happy with the way this blanket has turned out and with everybody's input it has really made it a special project for me. And I'm also very happy to have it done before the uh, the cold weather is completely finished with us because now I get to actually enjoy it for a little while. We will definitely post a couple of photographs and um, I'm gonna do like a little wrap up video of it. Um, so look for that this weekend, probably, because um, Friday we have a new tutorial for you. This is also going to give the added bonus of some additional strength in the center of the blanket where all of that strain is on the uh, the join of the four squares. So this is kind of neat and it's going to operate like a little bit of additional strength for my blanket as well as having a heart at the very center. All right, and that brings me back down to where I started. Aw, this little heart is so cute. I'm going to make a little knot down here at the bottom. Make that nice and tight. And then I'm going to take my needle, bring it up to the inside, not pull the thing out of alignment. There we go. And weave this in a couple times back and forth, trim the excess, and we will call this a finished blanket. <laughs> I think that's enough. And the last snip. One heart in the center of an otherwise all square blanket. <laughs> what a fun little way to finish it off. Oh. Everybody, thank you so much for helping me figure out this blanket, for being here for the, the whole process. Uh, this will also be included in the overall extra large mitered granny square blanket build. So if you ever want to go back and create one from scratch, you can do the whole thing. It's all done live. There's nothing left up to the imagination. Uh, we will see you here Friday for a new tutorial, something completely different. We will have a little summation video of this project for you on the weekend. And next week, we'll be doing a live crochet along with the big, beautiful basket. So more information on that to come. Thank you all for hanging out. I hope you uh, had a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Thank you to everybody who stayed up for this. <laughs> um, make sure you have a good night's sleep. And uh, we will see everybody here on Friday. Mr. and Stitches, is there anything you'd like to add? No, see everyone Friday.
great. Take care, everybody. Bye. Photos incoming. See you later.